A warm welcome to today's talk. Now, I've been putting today's talk off for a little while, actually, but I think we need to do it. Um, it's all about mental health and indeed mental illness. Now, the first part of the talk will be about mental health, and we're going to use some information from the COVID Symptom Tracker app. And the second part of the talk is about mental ill health, uh, depression and anxiety particularly. Now, this is something that you may have suffered from yourself. It's something I've suffered from. Um, if you haven't suffered from it yourself, uh, you will have known people, if you have known any, if you, anyone at all really, um, you will know people who have suffered from it or will suffer from it. And we need to be uh, aware of this and we need to think about promoting mental health the same way we promote physical health. People are, uh, are holistic. We are mind, body, spirit. We, are, we can't isolate ourselves into little, into little compartments. So let's look at that now. We'll just start off with some information from the COVID Symptom Tracker app. They're doing quite large surveys on this now, particularly thinking about the way pandemic affects mental health. But of course, this is something we need to be aware of at the best of times. Um, for, for me personally, I'll just give you a bit of background. I, I was a psychiatric nurse at one point. I still am a registered psychiatric nurse. And I haven't practiced directly in psychiatry for, for many, many years. But of course, uh, uh, mental health issues come up um, through all forms of, of clinical work, through all forms of education. So it's something I've been uh, involved with um, indirectly for all my working life, really. And I've, 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 had, I've had a period of depression. I'm not, not hiding that. Uh, and anxiety. Um, many people have. Um, it's uh, something that we need to talk about just the same as you would mention to your friends if you had a sore knee or a sore leg or a, a sore tummy or something. You know, it's, it's, it's just part of humanity. So that's kind of my, my, background, my background on that. Um, so the first part, mental well-being. The second part, more mental illness. Um, distress. Mental distress is probably a better term. Um, I think I like the term mental distress better than mental illness because it is distressing and it's distressing to see someone else suffer from it as well. Completely real phenomena. So how we're supporting mental health during the COVID-19. This is, this is the um, COVID symptom tracker. So it's asking questions about sleep. Sleep is very important for immunity. It's very important for physical health. And of course, it's very important for mental health. So good to keep an eye on that. How are you sleeping recently? Physical activity, generally a good thing. So to keep physically active is generally good, physical and mental activity. So uh, how are you doing in terms of physical activity? Is it more or less since the onset of uh, the pandemic difficulties or indeed compared to other times of your life? What about spending times in green spaces or with pets? Now, of course, some people are fairly privileged I've got an allotment I can go to. Other people um, have to just make do with a, with a city park or a small area. Um, it'll depend on where you are, but just to see green is is good. Uh, two colours that are good: the blue of the sky and the, uh, the 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 green. If you live in if you live in England, it's fairly it's fairly green a lot of the time because of the rain. Um, but even if you don't live in a green area, you might live in New Mexico, for example. Then, then just that sort of being in nature, being outside in nature is what it's about. Personally, I love desert environments. Uh, pets, of course, well known to promote mental health. No, no debate about that. Whatever pets uh, you like. Smoking or vaping, uh, bad. Drinking alcohol, bad. Snacking, bad. Are you doing more of these? Um, many of us are. Um, personally, I probably have. I don't smoke or vape, but... Uh, Drinking is a temptation, snacking is a temptation for many of us. And of course, uh, a temptation wouldn't be a temptation, I guess, if you didn't give in to it sometimes. Uh, interacting, uh, interacting in person or online with family, friends and taking part in organised activities such as sports, social club or religious groups. Um, many people, we believe, are doing less of this now. And of course, all these interactions are good for our well-being. This can result in feeling more alone, which is bad. Uh, working time on screen, are you working more, are you working less? Uh, and of course, the, the, the financial difficulties that can go with, with the working implications. Uh, relaxation practices such as meditation or mindfulness, are you doing that? More on that later, perhaps. Um, reading, watching or listening to the news, of course, can be good or it can be bad. 
So moving on to that, the COVID Symptom Tracker app gives five tips for supporting mental health. And I think they're, they're quite reasonable ones. So I want to go, I want to go through them before we go into look at uh, frank depression and uh, anxiety. Um, five tips to support your mental health during COVID-19 from the COVID Symptom Tracker app. I expect this will be refined when they get more information and data through on the changes to um, mental health promoting or, or indeed mental ill health promoting activity that may have changed during the, the pandemic. So first tip, uh, number one, be kind to yourself and others. So this is, this is what we call altruism, um, helping other people. So this is the Mental Health Foundation, I quite like this. Um, evidence shows that helping others has a positive effect on your own mental health and well-being. So helping others is good for you. So it's good to help others because you help others. That should be a, an intrinsic motivation. We want to help others, but a pretty good side effect of that is it helps me as well. Interesting. So helping others helps you. The principle of altruism and of course this this goes back through human history humans are, are designed to live in groups we can't survive in groups we're not particularly fast we're not particularly strong we don't have particularly sharp teeth like tigers do we we have our intelligence and we have our group working that that, that is that is human strengths and, and that is just the way we are and um you, you can't i don't think you simply can't deny the way you are we are designed to work in groups Altruism is part of that. Um, this gives us feelings of belonging, uh, perspective, and uh, being nice to others is contagious as well. So belonging to a group, we belong to groups, whether it be families, church groups, scout groups, photography club groups, cycling club groups, whatever it is. Um, that that's good and 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 talking and helping others gives us a, a sense of, of perspective of self looking at other people's issues and difficulties and maybe helping them with these helps us to put our own problems into some sort of focus as well i often find that is uh that is helpful but but good for others as well and and i think i think it's important you know people are under stress at the moment um modern life is is difficult um so cut yourself a bit of slack. And if someone comes back with a sharp word, then just cut them a bit of slack. You know, they're probably having difficulty as well. So um, we need to be tolerant of each other. Cut ourselves some slack and yourself some slack. So um, right, um, next point is check your sources, but not too often. So this is people dwelling on the kind of dwelling on the pandemic issues. We need to go for facts rather than a, an emotional response and um well i mean i i, I try, don't always get it right but i i try and do this um you know try and put in scientific references and the reason the, the only reason i like science is science reflects the nature of reality or good science accurately reflects the nature of reality so we have to sort of go for that rather than go for misinformation you know, th th these days you can surround yourself by selecting what you watch on social media or what, what news channels or whatever you watch with exactly what you want to hear, um, if you want to. But whereas we need to strive for objectivity, evidence. Um, keep in touch with people. So it could be, obviously, electronic media or it could be talking to people through the window if they're not part of your, part of your uh, bubble. You, know, you can still walk out and shout at someone through the window and, and that, that is still still connectedness it's still good um next point fourth point uh, well, is that the fourth point yeah that's the fourth point uh, take care of yourself so think about your nutrition um stay active have some quiet time but build a bit of you time bit of quiet time into the day quiet unwind time now some some people will practice a particular uh, religious pursuit a particular um philosophical um pursuit like mindfulness just just taking time to be aware that you are aware time to be aware of your consciousness and the deep profound mystery that is that is your consciousness i mean i've no idea why you're conscious let alone why i'm conscious we, we seem, there is no theory of consciousness 
um, that makes any sense but but in yet we experience it so just take time to enjoy that you know and be aware be aware that you're enjoying it i guess a green space we've mentioned part of the take care of yourself and fifth one they mention is bring some structure to your day some you time is good some as we just said a quiet time for yourself but structure is good you know the whole sleep hygiene idea you know you know, I don't know what you're like, but, you know, if, if I don't have a particular structure in my day, I tend to go to bed later and later. I start watching rubbish on TV in the evenings. Uh, that, that, then I don't sleep as well. Then I sleep in through the day and get up late and, uh, you, you know, you just poor sleep hygiene. And you, you need structure, you know. People need uh, a, an order to their day. It's just the way we work best. Not many people work, uh, not many people uh, have a completely chaotic lifestyle where what they do is different every day. Uh, we, we do work best with, a, with a, a type of routine as long as it's not too rigorous. So that's the kind of mental health bit. Now, the next bit I want to do is mental ill health. And um, I'm going to use this using the, this structure here. Uh, we have looked at it before on this channel, Patient Health Questionnaire 9. Now, you can actually go through this and fill it out for yourself online if you want. But I'm just going to go through it uh, on the notes to tell you what it's about. So it's called Public Health Questionnaire, and I guess it's the ninth incarnation of this. And it's kind of a screening tool for depression, for depressive illness. Now, you can answer the questions in the following way. Zero would be not at all. One would be several days. Two would be more than half of the days and three would be nearly every day. So they are the options that you would give. You would score each of the following questions with a uh, zero, one, two or three. Because what you find with, with mental distress or any form of distress, it, it differ, differs from day to day. So some days you might feel not too bad. Other days you can feel completely wretched, to be quite honest. Other days you can feel you can feel pretty good. And the thing about depressive illness is you get more bad days than uh, than good days. And, th and then when mental illness is being treated, um, you know, what I always try and monitor to monitor people is, is yes, you know, as, as you recover um, and people do, you do recover, of course, um, th th that, that you get. You still get bad days, but you, you get progressively some good days and then some more good days. And then the bad days become the minority. And then you get more and more good days as, as you recover. And it can be the same when you're deteriorating. Uh, if a mental, if, if a depressive period is coming on, you might have some good days, but then the bad days seem to become more common. So that that's important to realise. So that, that's where that sort of scoring comes from. Now, the nine questions... Um, Little interest or pleasure of doing things. I mean, this is called ahedonia. It's the, the, the medical term for it. But basically what it means is things that you used to take an interest in, things that you used to enjoy doing, no longer give you pleasure. So you're not, if you're interested in whatever it is, if you're interested in football, then you say, well, what's, what's the point? I don't, I don't see the point in that. Or, or if you're interested in trains or whatever it is, the interest win, uh, diminishes. And, and when you do do something that you used to enjoy, you think, well, what's the point in this? I don't really enjoy this anymore, regardless of what it is. So there's a complete, you know, on bad days, there's, there's an inability to enjoy life. Uh, it becomes a chore. There's no pleasure in it anymore. That, that is a feature of depressive illness. So if it's you, if it's someone else, be aware of that and uh, consider the possibility of a depressive illness. Um, sometimes you feel down, depressed or hopeless. Hopelessness is, is a big part of, of depressive illness. So if someone's depressed, what you have to understand is that, that there is no hope, that the hope is gone. Uh, I had hoped at one point I would get better, but now I realise it's hopeless. I realise I can never, ever get better from this. And of course, that form of hopeless thinking is part of the, part of the condition. Of course, you can get better from this. But, but you feel and you really, really believe you can't. So there might be hope for other people. Other people can probably be treated for depressive illness. But if I'm depressed, it wouldn't work for me. There's no hope for me. That, that's all part of the condition. The, 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 this did, it becomes illogical thinking, really, that um, 
it's all part of the condition and it feels hopeless. Uh, trouble falling asleep or, or uh, sleeping too much. Um, trouble falling or staying asleep. Now, what happens quite often is, yes, of course, it can be uh, difficult to fall asleep. Um, but um, if I'm having a difficult time, I tend to wake up about three o'clock in the morning. You can't stay asleep or two o'clock in the morning, then you're awake for ages. Um, or, or some people sleep too much. OK, it can affect different people, can, can be affected in different ways. Um, but tr trouble falling asleep, staying asleep or sleeping too much. Think, is this a, a feature of depression? Uh, feeling tired or having little energy. Now, of course, the most fundamental mistake um, you can make in, in psychiatric care is to think that um, a particular symptom or a particular feature is um, psychological stroke psychiatric when in fact it's physical. So, of course, there's many physical reasons for this that should be eliminated by doctors first. Um, but people can be physically fit and still feel tired or have little energy as a result of depression. Poor appetite or overeating, of course, are classic ones. For me, um, I get poor appetite if I'm not good. Um, other people overeat. It just depends how it goes for them. But both features of depression. Uh, feeling bad about yourself or that you're a failure or yet that you've let people or your family down. The, 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 this is an absolutely awful, awful feeling that, that um, you've got all these good people around you and yet I've let them down. I, I, I'm the failure. When, of course, in all probability, <laughs> you're not. It's, these are the feelings that are associated with, um, with depressive illness. Feeling bad about yourself or that you've let people down. You know, I've known people who've worked tirelessly for, for decades and uh, they have a depressive episode. And uh, they, they having, having, having worked tirelessly for their family for decades, in, in one case I can think of... Um, um, the, the, the person just felt that they were a complete failure and they let the family down. So irrational, so irrational. Uh, and yet, this is depressive thinking. This is the nature of it. Trouble concentrating on things such as reading a newspaper or watching television. That goes with lack of interest, but pure difficulty in concentration is a depressive feature. Um, moving or speaking slowly that other people have noticed... This is called in the in, in the jargon psychomotor retardation, mind movement slow. <coughs> Moving or speaking slow so that other people have noticed. Or the opposite, being so fidgety or restless you have been moving around a lot more than usual. So some some people um, get this mo slow movement, often goes with slow thinking as well. But this is particularly about movement or, or others become restless and fidgety. Again, it can go either way, but both depressive features. Uh, thoughts that you'd be better off dead or hurting yourself in some way. Um, one of the more distressing things about um, mental health issues is um, dealing with people who have uh, attempted suicide. Indeed, unfortunately, dealing with people who have committed suicide on a few occasions. Um, or, 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 or people that have hurt themselves at very... You know, you know, treat, I've treated a lot of people with w wounds, of course, and um, if it's an accident, it's one thing, but if, if it's something that you, the individual has done to themselves, it's got a more distressing component to it. And yet this is, this is a feature of depression for some people. Um, so um, you score 0, 1, 2 or 3, and that will give you a score of 0 to 27, and of course the higher the number, the, the worse. Now this has been validated, this, the validity uh, has been assessed against independent structured mental health professional interviews. So this is rated as a good uh, sort of quick and ready score. Um, public health PHQ 9 score of uh, equal to or greater than 10 has a sensitivity of 88% specificity. Uh, or of, uh, sorry, sensitivity, in other words, it's likely to pick it up. And specificity, it's not likely to give you false negatives. 88% for both, 12% chance it won't pick it up or 12% chance it will give you a false negative. So um, pretty useful and, and all of those are um, j just things to bear in mind. And if this is happening to you, think just a minute, just a minute, hang on. 
I'm not enjoying things like I used to. Just a minute, I'm waking up at three o'clock in the morning having difficulty getting back to sleep. Just a minute, I can't concentrate very well at the moment. You know, and just think, is this a depressive problem? Because this is common, this is common to, to humans. And of course, in, the, in, those, in those around you, um, can consider it as well. So that is uh, the nature of depressive illness. Now, the other common one, and again, this, this is, is it equally distressing. It's a different form of mental distress, I guess. But very often the two go together is anxiety. So uh, this is called General Anxiety Disorder or GAD7. This is their assessment tool for this. And this is saying over the past two weeks, how often have you been bothered by any of the following problems? So think about your last two weeks and answer these seven questions to, to gauge if you're suffering from uh, an anxiety disorder. Um, much more common, much more common than you think. People tend to have a fairly good awareness or, or more people are aware of the, the, the risk of depression and the problem of depression. But I think, I think there's less public awareness as to the nature of uh, anxiety. Just, just um, people can be anxious about things for no particular reason or disproportionately anxious about things. So I think, I think this is probably less commonly known about. So over the past two weeks, so uh, the seven questions. First one, feeling nervous, anxious or on edge is a fairly obvious feature of, of anxiety. So do you feel nervous? Maybe you can pinpoint what you're nervous about and it's a disproportionate nervousness about something. Or you might feel anxious and nervous but not know why. This is called free floating anxiety where, where you can be anxious but, but you don't know why you're anxious. But you are, the anxiety is real but you don't know why it is. Uh, very difficult to speak for people to talk about this. So, you know, if, if this is what you're feeling, try, try and tell someone. Um, not being able to stop or control worrying. Worrying about often a, a wide range of things. Everything is a problem or a potential problem. Worrying too much about different things, a range of different things. So worrying a lot of the time or nearly all the time. Uh, worrying about a range of different things. And of course, related to that is an inability to relax. You know, people with anxiety will often say to me, you know, you just, I just can't relax. You know, we've just talked about taking time out and uh, relaxing and just you know, thinking about your own consciousness or, or whatever it is. You know, people with anxiety disorder can have a complete inability to do that. Of course, this gets tie ties them out. This is one thing that's very poorly understood. Anxiety is exhausting. And these people become exhausted. Uh, being so restless that it's hard to sit still. So agitation, particularly a motor agitation, moving around, pacing up and down. I mean, we talk, we have the expression pacing the floor, don't we? That um, anxiety is, is, is associated with an inability to keep still. Now, this is one that a lot of people don't realise about anxiety. Becoming easily annoyed or irritable. A lot of people don't realise that anger is a feature of depression uh, and more so of anxiety. So if, if someone is, um, if you say something to someone and they kind of bite their head off or, or respond in, aggress in an aggressive way, that's not usual for them. That is a, a feature of anxiety and mental distress. So rather than having a go back at them, think, oh, just a minute. That, that's a feature of possible mental distress. Uh, how, how can I come alongside? Come alongside and, uh, and, and help this person and give them some options. Because when you're attacked, it's often very easy to attack back. And of course, that just makes a vicious circle. So if, if there's irritability, anger, um, think, oh, just a minute, is, is, is this because this person is suffering? And realise it in yourself. If you're being snappy and uh, sort of have, having a go at people for minor things, just think, is this, a, is this because of my mental distress? And tell people about that. You know, we're surrounded by people that speak the same language. We can communicate. And, and, and this gives us a tool to communicate because very often it's very hard. Uh, feeling afraid that something awful might happen. So um, this is often related to yourself. Um, 
the, the fear that uh, you might die or, or in families, particularly with parents, um, it, it's, it's a fear that something will happen to their children. Um, so so the, 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 the disordered mind seems to think about the worst possible thing that could possibly happen and, and you uh, have disproportionate anxiety about that. So they're all features of anxiety. You'll recognise, so these depressive features and anxiety features, you'll recognise some of them, you'll have seen some of them in yourself, and uh, you will see them in other people. Just, just be aware that this is where this is coming from. Um, now, sometimes, of course, um, if people are depressed or anxious, they need professional help. There's many professional treatments. Um, if it's short of that, then very often just having someone else to talk to having someone to uh, to admit this to um, is it harder for men than for women possibly um, remember that remember um, I don't want to get too personal about it but the first time I had an I had some anxiety problems and uh, to actually say to your colleagues or, or your family whoever it is I'm anxious is, is actually one heck of a step it's actually really really hard to say just a minute Things aren't right here. I'm anxious. And of course, they normally say, well, what about? What are you anxious about? Well, very often there is nothing. This is the whole point. So, um, but taking that first step saying, you know, just a minute, I, I'm not quite right at the moment. You know, I have got difficulty with, with concentration. I've got difficulty about feeling bad. You know what? Yesterday for 10 minutes, I was thinking about hurting myself. You know, these things are not normal. And uh, tell people verbalize it bring it out into the open is better than hiding it and trying to compensate and we do compensate because we're tough you know you, you carry on working um, you, you carry on <laughs> everything's fine but it's not you know in these situations it's not but with treatment and support it can be made right again it actually isn't hopeless there are excellent treatments for depression and for anxiety but of course, you must assess that there is a problem first in order to even seek the help that's required. Um, so the score from there is 0 to 21. Now, you can do these online. You can do these. If you can't be bothered adding up for yourself, <laughs> you, you, can do, you can do these. You can do these here. These questionnaires. Um, they're only a guide, but... Um, they're a good guide. And the other reason... Uh, let me just finish the anxiety, the, 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 uh, the anxiety one, first of all. Um, remind me to say what I was going to say in a minute. Um, so above 5 would be mild anxiety. Um, above 10, moderate anxiety. Above 15, severe anxiety. Uh, above 10, of course, we should seek uh, professional help. As, of course, you should with any of these things. Um, at a score of 10, the, the GAD7 has a sensitivity of 89%, so it's good, 89% likely to pick it up, and a specificity of 82%, uh, not too likely to give false negatives. But certainly enough to seek a professional opinion if you feel that you are suffering. And suffering is, is, the, is the actual word. Uh, also used in, uh, useful in panic disorder, um, which is what it, largely what it says, social anxiety disorder people frightened in social situations a phobia of vomiting in public for example uh, and post-traumatic stress disorders after traumas uh, in life so i was going to say the other reason i find this useful is um you know if you feel this in and you, you know you get a particular score and then um you start talking about it you start some sort of treatment um and and, and you actually fill it out on a on a weekly basis for example uh, as you as, as you condition improves you can actually see your score going down which is in itself remarkably encouraging so i to be quite honest i still use these uh, on a fairly regular basis to monitor my own my own uh, well-being and, and, and mental well-being and uh, if you do get a low score thankfully at the moment my scores are fairly low um th that in itself is, is is a bit of a boost so um, I found those useful. Um, the, 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 those criteria are, are agreed. Um, the, 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 this, this is expert opinion and, um, 
I, I found it useful in my personal experience as well. So I hope that helps. Um, just have a high uh, index of suspicion about, about mental distress disorders like anxiety and depression in yourself and, um, and in those around you. Be aware that this is common. This is a common attribute of uh, being human, that we can go through these periods of mental distress, uh, but there are treatments and we don't need to go through them alone. I think that's quite long enough for now. Um, of course, if you look at these sites, there's references and all sorts of other things. But um, be aware of it. Don't take mental health for granted. You know, do, do these. Think about those things like on the COVID symptom tracker app to try and promote your mental health. But be aware that anxiety and depression can come along. Uh, Recognise it at an early stage. Get treatment. Get professional help if you need that at an early stage. And and uh, and share, share share your feelings as early as you can. It is not a sign of weakness. Um, so in this video, I've shared some fairly personal things with you. I don't consider myself weak. I've done some pretty tough things, um, and I'm sure you have as well. Um, but but to have a, a depression or anxiety is not a sign of weakness. It's as human as getting an appendicitis or an upset stomach or diarrhea. Okay, there we go. Um, thank you for watching, of course.